If you've seen a lot of my videos, you know that I like to talk about Remnote a lot, and I did originally make a video explaining what Remnote is, but since then a lot has changed, so here's a new and updated video on two things. Firstly, why I use Remnote over other apps and websites such as like Anki for example, which is probably the main other competitor against Remnote, and also how I use Remnote and how I have myself organized in it, so if you are willing to use Remnote to have some sort of an idea in what you're meant to do with it and how you can fully utilize it to do well in your exams. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. Timestamps as always are in the description. Remnote is basically a flashcard making software where you can study flashcards and make them as well as make notes and be able to review them whenever they come into your queue. And the queue is basically a space where you only receive flashcards when you're basically meant to receive them if that makes sense when you when when the app feels that you are going to forget that piece of information that's when they send that flashcard back to you to make sure you still remember it and it's through a process known as space repetition where over time you study a specific piece of information uh, slowly incrementing the amount of time between each review session to the point where it sticks in your head for a longer period of time. There are loads of videos online that talk about space repetition and how much of an effective technique is in terms of revision as well as active recall which is another thing that Remno uh, embeds into its website. The whole premise of making flashcards and reviewing them that's all active recall because you're trying to actively get that information from your head rather than passively reading it from a book but I'm pretty sure that you've heard that already the thing that I find special about Remnote compared to something like Anki is just the way everything is organized and the way you can link it all together and I personally would say that none is better in my opinion I don't think Anki is better or Remnote I feel like they're on the same level it just depends on the type of person that you are and so if you're someone who just doesn't use flashcards at all I would say use both if you're trying to work out which one's better for you I would say try them both out see if you like any of them uh, if you find that one works really well for you use that because it just really depends on the person because some people uh, say that they don't really like the interface of Anki and they don't like the way everything's laid out I think the most important thing is once you found a revision technique, a revision website, a revision app that works for you, don't change it unless it's going wrong. If everything's going well, but you see this other app is looking really good as well, don't change. If you're doing well enough, you don't need to change anything. I would say it's better to keep with whatever you have if you're doing well, and only to change if you are clearly seeing any sort of problem. Okay, so that is literally all there is to Remnote, and you can tell that the reason I use Remnote is purely based on preference, and the way I like it laid out it's not got anything to do with the features and things because both Anki and Remnote are free but Remnote has a premium plan which um, I do not recommend you pay for because it's just really it's not worth it but I'm pretty sure you do get one month free when you sign up with a new account and if you haven't signed up for Remnote by the way make sure you click the link in the description below to sign up this video isn't sponsored or anything but yeah so if you haven't signed up for Remnote and you think you want to do that the link is in the description for that and I would say that the only useful thing about the Remnote Pro subscription is the fact that it has image occlusion which if you don't know what image occlusion is it's basically where you get an image and you hide certain bits of it and the flashcard itself in this case is to try and think of what the missing parts are so it's usually to a diagram and you cover up the labels and then uh, at one at a time each flashcard will test you on a specific part of that label and the problem is Remnote doesn't have that feature for free you have to pay for it or you can use the first month free to try and get all your image occlusion flashcards done but a way I got around that was to go to Google drawings to put like squares around all the things I want to block out and then make a copy that into the front side of the flashcard and then on the back do the same thing but just the image itself and I know it is a bit long-winded but it, it does the job and to be honest you don't really have much image occlusion to do most of the time it's only like every now and again that you need to get an image memorized or like a diagram memorized so yeah that is one workaround if you are struggling with that but apart from that both Remnote and Anki 
are pretty much free Anki does have an app which you have to pay for but you can literally just use like the Safari version or like the Google version it's perfectly it, it doesn't work as well as the Anki itself that you can download like on desktop but it still does the job and yeah that is all there really is to Remnote so let's just get straight into how I use Remnote and just a brief tutorial in the interface and the way it works here is my interface for Remno and as you can see it is very very basic right now because I'm an A-level student I only have three subjects so I literally only have biology chemistry here I don't make flashcards for maths because I don't really see the point of it the only revision I really do for maths is just doing the practice questions and that makes me remember the information but I might make some flashcards for maths if it gets more content heavy across the year but for now I'm coping with just biology and chemistry and if you're doing GCSE this video should still help as well uh, it will still be applicable to anything that you might be doing in terms of studying so yeah but I'll show you my A level setup but it's the same thing as GCSE there's not really much different all of the topics are here laid out really nicely I've used the Caboodle textbook to follow along with all the topics oh, but it, like it doesn't matter what you use as long as you have some sort of set way of doing it like for chemistry I use the specification it's different because uh, our biology department in our school refers more to the Caboodle textbook and our chemistry department is more towards the uh, specification I can see up here if I click on that it actually brings up the specification so I don't even need to go to a separate tab I've already got it saved going back to biology let's look into our biological molecules why not so once you go into a specific bullet point you can see that you can bring in more bullet points so it's really similar to the way notion works in terms of like each page can br bring up another page and it's just infinitely amount of times you can do that some of these are blue and the reason for that is what I've done is I would highlight a specific keyword and I would label it with one of these references. Over time I'm going to have the word carbohydrate mentioned in so many different places and sometimes I want to like link back to other places I mentioned certain words. So let's go for enzyme. The word enzyme has me been mentioned a lot. Look at this. So I can like scroll through all of these. I can see all the different places I've mentioned the word enzyme. So if I just for some reason need to see what other things enzymes are used in this is the place to go to. I don't know yet if this is something that's going to be useful for me but I am testing new things and I want to see how it work out and I do the same for chemistry and for chemistry I also do this thing for the elements as well so I can always see for example if I click on oxygen um, well I don't have it here but if I click on oxygen I can have like a massive list of all the times I've mentioned oxygen and I can also in that list I can at the top I can write whatever I want so if I want a small oxygen fact file so whenever I'm like it'd be like a mini Wikipedia page in that sense so let's go into how I actually do the flashcards so my very first flashcards over here is what's a monosaccharide and then I've got this double arrow which basically means that either of these can show up as the flashcard so I've got two separate flashcards in this one line one of the flashcards will show up the word monosaccharide and I have to get all of this that I have to think about that if I get that after I see the correct answer then I can say yes I understood that and other times this part can come up and I need to remember that this is a monosaccharide so you can see that you can do multiple different things if I click on this I can make it backwards so I can make it that you only see the right side and the, the first part is the one that you need to try and figure out or I can do frontwards as well so it just depends on what you want uh, so it's like very flexible in that sense as you can see there's not really much here uh, let's go to some other one proteins for example um, as you can see I've got all these images here from my notes it is an image occlusion uh, as you can see I've got the entire diagram there and the parts that are blurred out are these like blue boxes which are going to cover up when I'm doing the flashcards uh, and you can just see these um, the way I make my flashcards so let's just go down here and just explain to you how I create a flashcard so if I mean I'm not going to spend too long on this because you most likely know how to do this already and if you don't there's lots of tutorials on the website for example you can write what is a protein and then you put question mark but what you can do now is have these two symbols and then you can just write whatever your answer is when you practice this section you will get all these flashcards and this will also be part of it now it will say what's a protein and you have to 
figure out what the answer is. And if you click on this, you can even see how it's going to look and you can tell that's how the flashcard's going to show up and then show answer and it'll show what you need to see. So yeah, it's that basic. Uh, there's lots of tutorials on this. You can also make like multiple lines. So for example, over here, I've got tertiary structure and I've got like multiple lines of things that I need to say to get the mark. But another thing that I'm when I'm going to start doing is this is what I did for GCSEs as well is when I did practice questions, any practice questions I got wrong, I'd usually put onto this and put their mark scheme as the answer. So I'd try and memorize the mark schemes in that way. And it helped a lot. Trust me, please do that, especially for questions that come up a lot. You're probably wondering, how do you actually practice these flashcards? So if you see the top left over here, it says flashcards. Uh, you've also got these like notes pages as well. You can make a note, a today's note, which is basically like a daily note that you can do a daily like document that you always have there, which is really cool. But um, if you click flashcards, for example, it's just popped up with this random flashcard here. What it's telling me right now is that there's 38 flashcards in everything. And basically what that means is there's 38 flashcards out of all the flashcards that I have that I right now need to complete uh, because they're most likely things that I'm about to forget. And so uh, what you're ideally trying to do is keep this number as close to zero as possible. And if you have a test on, for example, biological molecules, you can just type it in here and it's only going to pull up flashcards that you need to review in biological molecules. So any flashcards that don't come up in here that you have made, the reason they don't come up is that you've probably already studied them and you don't need to look over them again. You probably already know that information. And trust me, it saves so much time in the long run because once I come to exams, like, you know, the end of term exams and things, you're going to have very little flashcards to go over and once you've gone over them that's it you know all the information the more and more you practice your flashcards the less and less you're going to get them back as soon as possible you're going to see them go away for a long amount of time there are some of my flashcards that have gone for months i'm not going to see them in a few months time because of how much i know that information and you can also enable this feature where you can type in your answer before you see the answer yourself because <laughs> i think one thing i've made a big mistake on is i'll see a question I'd think about it slightly in my head and then I'd see the answer, I'd be like, yeah, I would have gotten that. And I would just say, yes, I understood that. But <clears throat> with this feature, I know when I've gotten the answer and I know when I need to work on whatever the answer was. So yeah, it's definitely helped a lot in that sense. What I suggest is going to like free science lessons, Caboodle textbook, CGP, whatever, uh, and just thinking, <clears throat> is this piece of information something I need to know. So if it's a keyword, you're most likely going to want to make a flashcard out of it. If it's a definition, you're most likely going to make a flashcard out of it. If it's anything that you think you could potentially be tested on, just please make a flashcard out of it. It's better to have a flashcard on something that you already think you know pretty well than to think, oh, you know this thing, so you don't make a flashcard on it, but you end up forgetting it because the more times you review something through flashcards, it's going to stick for longer as well. And so it's just the only thing that can really go wrong with flashcards is if you make too many at once. So it's really, really important to throughout the year be constantly making flashcards and reviewing them, especially like when you make a, a massive batch of flashcards make sure you review them all first before you let them go because more flashcards are going to start appearing in the queue and what happened back in my year 11 days was that i had well over like 300 400 flashcards actually no, there was a point where it went over like a thousand and i had to get them all down to zero and it was stressful but i managed to do it uh, but the point is just always try and keep it at least below 100 if it goes above 100 you know that you need to start doing something about it but yes yeah, if you can keep it as low as possible it's going to save you so much stress and trust me by the time you get to exams all you're going have to do is practice question and yeah that is it for my new and improved remote tutorial so i hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure you leave a like down below and comment anything that you might have a question on still because i mean i did go through everything quite fast so there might be something that i have missed out so sorry about that but yeah if you found this useful make sure you share this video with someone else especially someone who might be struggling with their revision and yeah that's it so i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you again next time bye